Hey everybody, Matt Travis coming to you at The Potential You. Today I have the honor and pleasure to chat with a pediatrician who works in holistic medicine, which is a really cool treat for us um, because one of our main missions at The Potential You is to educate and empower parents to improve their health so that they can create a healthier future for their kids. And what better way to do that than just kind of see what else is out there uh, in the medical world. Because a lot of times we go to doctors and there's a lot of medications and things that are involved in that. And just seeing the holistic side of things, I, I think it gives us a really cool approach to health. So without further ado, uh, I wanted to introduce Dr. Solomon. Hi, how are you today? Hi, Matt. Wonderful Great. having you. Thank you, thank, thank you for coming. You. So I just want you to kick us off right now and just give us a little bit of your story, you know, how you got started with this and what, what is holistic pediatrics? Okay, first I want to enroll the uh, audience a little bit, like how many of you believe that, you know, many conditions that we're dealing with right now, you know, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, all even ADHD, autism are preventable, right? There's a lot of these conditions are not just uh, something that happened to us. There's so many things we can do to prevent and to shift the perspective of how we live our life. That's what I believe. And the principle of holistic medicine, if I can, is it okay to introduce myself a little bit of who yeah, I am? That's what I want you to do. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, uh, I'm already okay. hooked. You're, you're speaking. So, I was like, this is awesome. Everything you just said, I'm all totally on board. So, and I do believe in, in your mission and the human potential. You know, we should reach our highest potential. And that's what I strive for every day for my patients. So I've been board certified physician for over 20 years and have extensive study in holistic and integrative medicine for over 10 years and been board certified in that too. And such, I'm also studying functional medicine and I'm also a great cook. So yeah, <laughs> so yeah and, and I did a fellowship after my residency in pediatrics. I did the fellowship of uh, pediatric gastroenterology and nutrition at Baylor College of Medicine as well. So I have all these different aspects that enable me to have a deeper understanding and can provide the wisdom to what we need today in terms of uh, improving our well-being. Because I believe that you know, we should change the definition of doctor to uh, well-being ambassador. That's what we are. I love that. Right? And we, you know, instead I of trying to get something, we want people to be proactive about their health. Uh, you know, people tend to take better care of their cars, believe it or not. They take cars <laughs> yeah. for oil change, you know, every 5,000 miles, which about usually come out to about three times a year. And health checks sometimes, even for children, we didn't see them for two, three years. They disappear. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I would like uh, to, you know, waken people for consciousness a little bit because I myself had used to have multiple chronic conditions you know, before I took my integrative holistic medicine board. In 2008, I changed my diet, which changed my life. Within three days, I woke up symptoms free. I could breathe out of my nose, which was like a magical day for me. It was like one of the best day of my life and for somebody who couldn't breathe out of her nose for four or five years, been on at the time, three, four prescription, had surgery because I couldn't breathe. They had to, you know, fix my septum. And three days from changing diet, I could breathe and all my reflux, all the symptoms disappear. I stopped all the prescription within one month. I was just so afraid to stop it right away because I was taking it for four or five years. And that shook me up and woke me up from my coma. You know, my unconscious mindlessness coma. And I would like to help others to improve their health and realize that what we put in our body affect our health tremendously. 
I love it. Everything you just said is, uh, I completely align with it. That's why I started The Potential You because there is an unconscious way that we go about doing things. And, and mm -hmm. when we can start seeing that there are other options out there than just medicating ourselves and, and putting a Band-Aid on it. And I just love your approach. Um, so I guess the next question is, what, what do you do differently than a traditional pediatrician? So about a year ago, I had designed a program that really had profound and powerful effect on my patient's life that called Awesome Program that was designed based on the principle of holistic medicine also using functional medicine as one of the two. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit about, um, if you don't mind, about principle of holistic medicine. Basically, you know, principle of holistic medicine is that we focus on optimum health. You know, you're just not trying to fix some symptoms, you know, uh, palliatively. We, we want to look deeper to, to what caused the issue, right? And what, to get to the foundation of your health, which end up most of the time is lifestyle nutrition and also the healing power of love to, you know, the integrative um, aspect of mind, body, spirit, and wholeness of the person using preventation, preventative uh, method in, together with the treatment. Because sometimes we do need to help relieve the patient's symptoms, you know, until the other lifestyle adjustment effect kick in, you know, and that to realize the innate healing power of the person that um, using different modalities of healings, you know, not just prescription. For example, like, you know, exercise can be very good for a certain condition, but in certain condition, maybe, you know, you need more relaxation at that time, you know, and depend on the readiness of the patient, of the individual. So we have a relationship center care, focus on patient's need and readiness, because also my experience that sometimes when the patient's not ready for certain certain uh, plan that we think they should have, there's an incremental approach that we should instill so that, you know, they can get there. It's, it's not, you can't jump the house, you know, so, so they are where they are. And that's why we treat person as individual and teaching by example, you know, I'm a living proof of lifestyle diet work, you know, and I don't need any prescription it has been like for almost 10 years now. And that we also have um, learning opportunities with our patients. I always learn from my patients that when something works for them, you know, it's like, okay, what made you take this action? What, what made you decide to do this? You know, what, what could I learn from this so I can tell my other patients? And, or when it doesn't work, also I ask them, like, you know, what could have, have moved them to the next stage? for example. So that, that's the principle of holistic medicine, which is wholesome and awesome, in my opinion. I love all of that. And I, I love the point that you made about exercise and how, you know, exercise is great for some, but then uh, relaxation can also be very important. I, I myself deal with adrenal fatigue and, you know, high intensity interval training is not what I would recommend for somebody with with high, at that point yeah, yeah exactly yeah. you know so you really, a place. yep so you know especially when i was just starting it was uh, it was a lot of uh relaxation yoga um a lot of meditation at the very beginning you know just walking things like that to get out of the adrenal fatigue and then you know as that builds up you can definitely add in a lot more from there um you, I, I just love the perspective and i and i really think it's a it's a great whole approach to give to people that allows them to take control of their of their health and i wholeheartedly agree with um making sure that someone is not only ready but willing because they, they go hand in hand right if they're not willing and they're not ready doesn't matter what plan you give them. It, right. <laughs> not going to happen. Exactly. And I learned that. That took me five years yeah. from the government 5210 program that it didn't work. Yeah. yeah. So I decided, why don't I just meet them where they're at? Bingo. 
Love it. And elevate them a little bit, you know, with a lot of encouragement. And, you know, the body is such a magnificent machine, you know. You, I have a chapter in my, by the way, I'm an author of an upcoming book, Project awesome. Love. Uh, optimization victoriously established because based on the program that I decide for my patients that it just something that long lasting and you can, you know, keep adjusting according to where you are. And it's powerful and your body is, I call it body of wisdom. Just That's awesome. The, the well, power we'll, to heal. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll, we'll include the link for your book in the bottom of the video. Um, just so that people can know where to get that. Cause that's, that's great. I didn't even know that. That's awesome to know. In the process. Yes. <laughs> that's great. Hey, you know, when, when it's there, we will, we will include the link down below. Thank you. Um, so I, I've been on a mission and, and definitely for myself, uh, and went, a gut healing mission. And I've done at least 20,000 hours of research on the the microbiome and the human gut and just the gastrointestinal system because of dealing with my own gastrointestinal issues. Uh, and just when I delved into that, I really started to learn that the gut, a healthy gut is a healthy person and it all starts in the gut. So I was wondering, uh, because you have a pretty good background in that, I'd love for you to touch base on that and just tell, talk to parents about how optimizing the gut health is so important. Oh, you know, if you heard of um, might be the, the quote about Hippocrates that he said, death begin in colon. Yes. <laughs> and, yep. and now you might have heard also in the news about a month or so ago that the incidence of colon cancer is now rising in younger population as young as people in their 20s. Yes. And, I had actually a couple of parents from my clinic that had to endure that and they were in their late twenties, had to go to surgery and chemo. So anyway, but you probably understand a lot already about microbiomes that now this is almost like a new science, right? That we realize the bacteria, the virus, the, even the fungus that live within us and on our skin. And basically I call it, you know, this ecology, the whole body system. Uh, they are actually, if you count the DNAs, they are about 90% of you, of your, your ecosystem. So we are, our DNA is only 10%. So, so they are actually having a lot of profound effect on our health more than we realized in the past. Totally. Um, some people would say that, you know, they, since they detox for us, they call them, this is a, another like an organ. <laughs> yeah. Or you know, they kind of live with us. So, so my my uh, point, my teaching focus for the patient is that which one you want to hang out with you, right? Just like friends, you want friends or foes. So you want the good guys to hang out with you, not not so much the bad guy. It doesn't mean we need to eliminate all of them, but it just means that we have to be able to have a balance within the system. And the studies show that the diversification of your microbiomes dictate how healthy you are because they, the studies show that people who have more diversification of the varieties of types. So it's more the types of microbiomes that you have that affect uh, your health. So if you have only a few kinds, usually people who have been, you know, eating stuff that not healthy for your healthy microbiome to survive, including, for example, GMOs, uh, things that have uh, pesticides, contamination, which kill your healthy bacteria. Just seems like when you spray bug spray in the garden, so you get the bad bugs, replace the healthy bugs. Mm. So that's what's happening. And then the certain food that micro the good microbes like, um, for example, you know, we call in functional medicine, rainbow diet, you know, the rainbow vegetables, uh, different colors have different micro, uh, phytonutrients. And then there are food that like fast food, 
um, wheat, soy, corn, those kind of stuff that are uh, things that contaminate with pesticides that kill your microbiomes. And there was a study that showed that within one day of eating fast food, the healthy bacteria did not survive. It's that fast. 24 hours, they die. So, so we want to be nice to our good friends. So basically, you want to eat varieties of most, mostly plants, mostly vegetables. And there should be different varieties mixed in because now we know besides different nutrients that you get from different uh, food items and food choices that you make, is also the microbes that come with the food. So, you know, like different vegetables have different kind of microbes that hang out with them. And even the way we wash our dishes, there was a study that showed that if you use the uh, automatic wash, dishwasher, actually that people, those people who do that more compared to people who hand wash their dishes have different microbes living with them. My acupuncturist just told me that exact fact and it made me be like, oh, bummer, because <laughs> it's, it's so much easier to throw things in the, in the dishwasher, but it's true. I mean, it, you know, it, it comes back to what you said, it's the balance, right? So whatever, you know, I, I don't believe in like restriction. Oh, every day you shouldn't put that in the machine. But at least if we are aware, you know, I think my job is to raise the awareness. Once we have conscious awareness and be mindful of what we do and how we live our life, what we put in our body, you know, then, then you'll be all right. You know, things can be mixed and matched. No, I can't do like my diet, like how many portions of vegetables a day, every day either, and we got to have fun sometimes. This is not about being restricted. And there were studies that show that people who are restricted or being loose about things, actually not the one to live the longest. The so moderation is a key, Matt. We have to have joy. That's joy oh. is key. Right? Amen to that. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the way we work here at The Potential You because it just won't work. You know, people can't do right. lists, and, and it's, it's almost causes a stress response in your body. And it's not fun. Yeah, I am here for fun. So <laughs> me who, who is with me? <laughs> I'm here for that. fun. So that. same with the program that I teach my patients. It's got to come from self-love and self-compassion, you know, yeah. that and we are here for fun. The reason we want to be healthy is so we can have more fun. That's the it. idea. I love so, it. Yeah. And, and also to realize certain uh, supplement could be important. Like in, I'm in Oregon. So vitamin D is essential for the immune system. And the gut is, you know, the basic bottom line of your, your immune system. 70% from the gut. And then also fish oil, the good quality one, and probiotics. Uh, the one that I recommend my patients to take as supplement. That's you. You align with me completely on that as well. I I agree with all three of those. And I'm up in 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 the Boston area and uh, Boston, Mass. In the winter, we do not get enough vitamin D, unfortunately. So we we also have to uh, we have to supplement up here as well. So I know I know where you're at. <laughs> and then I, I would like to add another thing about <laughs> sugar intake because I think I. I feel like we're almost in the era of overindulgence in everything, you know, the pot, the beer, the, you know, the, all the candies and stuff. Again, we can have fun with moderation because too much sugar, what happened is that everybody have yeast in their system, on the skin and in the gut. But when they're a small amount, they're pretty humble, right? They, they don't cause any harm. But when you eat a lot of sugary stuff, including the fruit juice, because the body can't tell what's, where is the sugar coming from, right? When they have increased population of yeast, guess what? The other one has to go away because they all need space and sharing food, right? Yeah. So, so basically it's about balance and, and, and to know that you're not overdoing something, you know, the balanced diet and not overly on sugary drink or sugar intake will be better for the gut. You are speaking my language. This is, this is everything. I, I love it. And, you know, a lot of what happened to me was I just had multiple uh, sinus infections and the doctors give you antibiotics to solve that. And unfortunately, it made, that, it made an imbalance because it, you know, it cleans the system out and whatever's left behind takes over. So for me, right. H. pylori and uh, 
and Candida were the two that 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 hung out and uh, and decided to overtake. And it's it's a it's a battle to fight back, you know, and and to come back from that. And those can lead to whole other host of issues, like uh, you know, I it it affected my adrenal fatigue. It it gave me histamine issues. It gave me other challenges to battle with. But uh, one the one thing that I really the biggest realization I came away from all of that with is, like you said, it's balance. You know, a lot of times we go at things like we need to kill it, right? That's like the natural way. It's like the kill it with antibiotics. But what if we just balanced everything out and we reduced our sugar intake and increased our, our, our vegetable intake and we started feeling better that way, right? It, it, but unfortunately, there's no money in telling people to eat vegetables, right? <laughs> so so well, that's, that's And fermented part. food... And that's I would throw in fermented food, yeah. you know, like kimchi and uh, sauerkraut or stuff. Also, you can even make your own pickle, you know. Yep. Yeah, um, we, to we add make our own like cabbage and uh, it, yeah, then we make, it, make it all that stuff. Um, it you it is an acquired taste. I had to get used to it because uh, if you're not into sauerkraut or kimchi, you know, you it, it is a slow progression. And I found I had to work my way up slowly as well. Um, and especially because of the candida and H. pylori, there, there are histamine issues that come along with that. Um, so you do have to work it up slowly, but it's, a, it's an amazing way to help bring your gut back to where you want it to be. So I, I think that's great. Um, I wanted to dig into um, kind of where, where you think, and this is not to bash other pediatricians in the, in the, in the traditional uh, medicine world, I just want to know kind of where you go different from them or where you think they might go wrong in a sense. Well, I think it's the mindset at that, you know, I wasn't taught this way either, you know, but um, just like what I say about the principle of holistic medicine that I realized that I'm basically, you know, a well-being or health ambassador, you know, instead of seeing a doctor as like the authority okay, we can put a Band-Aid on you, we can give you this prescription, that prescription, you know, that we, together with our patient, you know, with a lot of compassion, come up with the plan that what would work for them and, and to dig into what caused the issue. I, I believe, you know, all physicians are in the profession with the heart, but we were kind of What's the right word? You know, like, almost like a control from like the insurance industry, all these different factors. Most yeah. doctors I talk to, they feel like they don't have time with the patients. And that's what caused the discord, you know, because we're here to serve. We're here to be of service to people. But when you get 10 minutes with the patient, I think they, they focus on the time and that caused them a lot of stress. So actually, in the, in the near future, I'll be teaching doctors too, because I did not focus on time. And time worked for me at least 90% of the time. I focus on what I need to do and time work out. When we focus on different things, it kind of become more. It become constrictive to us. So I believe all doctors work for the good, you know, but then with the, with the stress from, you know, our profession dealing with sickness, right, Matt? It's not... <laughs> It's not like we're in fashion industry or something, you know. So I think that I, I salute to all my fellow physicians or healthcare providers because I would say it's not an easy job, but I changed my mindset. So I achieve it so that I don't focus on time. I focus on my patient. I focus on I want to help them. I want them well. How do I help? Then things work out. It's just amazing. <laughs> this is like a miracle. That is awesome. It's, yeah, how can you serve them? Um, it's, it's amazing. I, I wish I lived closer to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I I, you know. I, so, so, do you know of other, uh, other people that are doing what you're doing right now? In yes. Parts the, of the world, maybe in the Boston area? <laughs> Well, you know, the, this functional medicine doctor, AIHM, also have lists of doctors that uh, certify on their website, awesome. you know, so there's all these different organizations that um, have listing of physicians, and um, yeah, I, I believe that I, I'm actually 
decided yesterday I'm going to create a well-being movement. We're going to have a film about that too. That, you know, it, it's come up from all these positivity that health come from within, right? And, yeah. and well-being, it's our natural state of being. That's what I believe. You know, we, we are supposed to be well. When we're not well, something is off and we got to come back into our alignment to get there. And one of the things I want so much to improve is school lunch. That I got this from my patient that I felt so embarrassed about. Eight-year-old boy told me, well, you know, you feed us this at school. So we learned that we're supposed to eat this. I almost like want to put the bag on my head that, you know, like we are not doing good by, by the children by feeding them this. And we cannot say that we cannot afford to feed them a better food. We cannot afford not to feed them the right food, the healthy food. I say you either, you're either paying now or you're paying later, right? We are paying now, actually. You know, the incident CDC said that in the year 2021, in two or more Americans, this is just only adult, going to be diabetic or pre-diabetic. And we already seen high blood pressure and all these conditions in children. Yeah, I have a youngest one is nine-year-old girl with high blood pressure. So, so we cannot not improve this. It just, we, it's, it's our duty and it's the chosen children's right. That we take care of this. I so, am, so I'm creating this movement. <laughs> I'm on your team. I am joining your army. This is great. Um, so I have two more questions for you. So um, this is more of a personal one for me. Uh, as a teen in high school, um, I, you know, I, I went and saw a psychologist, and they ended up uh, diagnosing me with ADHD, right? And uh, and putting me on Adderall. So it's been 17 years now and uh, about three years ago I just got tired of continually taking 25 milligram time release and I started working myself down slowly it was very difficult for me to get down very 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 low um, I'm now at a 10 milligram time release because any lower I I just couldn't I couldn't interact in the world I wasn't able to uh, function but I hope in the near future to be able to fully get off and live uh, the life that I really feel like I was supposed to live. Now, when talking to parents about this, what would you recommend parents when they're thinking about, because this is, especially being a teacher, I, I have this question asked of me all the time, you know, what do you think about medication? Because I've been on it myself, but I also wholeheartedly believe that people need to be going uh, at exercise first, nutrition first, uh, other, other avenues to figure that out. Um, you know, Chinese medicine is a phenomenal route, uh, acupuncture, chiropractic work. So I just would love for you to share what you think is, you know, what, what you would share with a parent when talking about medication. Well, uh, first of all, I don't start with medication, right? Since uh, the philosophy of what I believe, actually what I know is that Basically, when there's symptom of disease, there's some imbalance somewhere in the body. For example, even autism, we found out that it's basically a systemic disease that affects the brain. So ADHD is the same way. And I had patients also with food allergies that manifest as anxiety, depression, even suicidal. So I would go dig into their lifestyle again. What are they eating? How do they live their lives? And then do some certain testing you know, to make sure that they don't have anemia, that they don't have lead issues. Um, how is their gut functioning? Is there any food allergies? And, and get them to do the supplement. I usually would say, you know, give me at least one month. We'll do this investigation. We'll take this supplement and come back and see where we at before we decide to do anything further. And, and even if they would still end up needing medication, they would need less of it and not progressively needing higher and higher dosage. That's my experience. And depend on how much they're willing to do because I have kids even got off medication or don't need medication at all. I have several teenagers that had anxiety, depression. I found that they have food allergy. When we change the way they eat, those symptoms disappear. And 
several of them didn't even need medications at all. So, so yeah, I, I would dig into all the symptoms, even how they sleep, how they, you know, interact with other people because sometimes there's stress in the family. And then there's one kid that mom had diabetes. When she changed her diet drastically because her doctor forced her to, the kid ended up didn't need medication for ADHD. So we just need a little bit of uh, adjustment for sleep because he, he had a sleep issue. But he ended up actually was a, he was an outstanding in, in the gifted program, actually, that patient of mine. Wow. Then got off all medications because he has so much side effect from them. We tried different ones and I asked mom, why are we, how is he doing? Why are we giving him the next medication? And she said, oh, he's doing great. And, and we were talking about medications, like why? So I, you know, like, like we have to pull ourselves back sometimes from the system, you know, like sometimes we work like a workhorse and, and didn't, didn't realize that, you know, we go and do like a, this clockwork and, and again, not being mindful about what's going on. So because, you know, I used to see 20 something patients a day. So, you know, you go in and out, in and out, in and out. So you got to give that to the doctors too, that the duty, the way is arranged, it could be causing some of this issue that why people are on a lot of medications too. But I, I want people to be aware so that they together with their health providers or the doctors, you know, to realize that, okay, we have options and what's the better option that we can come out with and what, other supplement we can use or how we can shift our diet and lifestyle so that the kid won't need medication or even if he does he or he or she does they'll need lower dosage of it so less the side effect i'm on board i am totally on board that thank you for that explanation uh and the gut like what you said they, all the autism kids actually have gut issues you yeah. probably have heard you know, most of them are constipated. Sometimes they have diarrhea, but whenever they did the biopsies, it's all showing inflammation. And same with obesity as well. It's an inflammatory disease. And I don't know if you heard this, Matt, about depression, that also inflammatory disease of the brain. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, know, I know firsthand that a few patients that have anxiety and depression that is actually causing from food allergies and food sensitivity. And, you know, a lot of what you bring up I, th it's the same research I'm reading and it's, it's hard for me because I work with so many kids on the autism spectrum. And I know just after reading all of those, uh, all, all of this research and I'm like, there's so much you can do. And, and it's almost, it's almost taboo to talk about what you're talking about because uh, people don't think it's possible. And it, it really is. It's possible to, make drastic, drastic improvements through, through these modalities. And one thing uh, that I want to mention is also there are genetics factors that we know more and more about. And there were uh, a lot of available tests that we can do to know that there's certain gene defect that, for example, like MTHFR for, for children with autism, that once we know there's certain supplement that they can take that would help them tremendously. And um, I have one autism patient that when I tell him to add L-carnitine, he was three years old at the time. He talked for the first time after one dose. Wow. So, so the testing is another thing that I want to mention that, uh, you know, we, we should be aware and, and, do we can we are we can do them so we can do more and then they are not um they're, they're not that expensive they're pretty affordable uh for 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 most people now i know and then, yes go ahead a lot of the kids on on the spectrum that i work with um the the eating challenges that they have a lot of times stem on textural issues and and uh right specific type of foods where they definitely prefer more bland uh, processed foods. So w when you're talking with a parent, I'm not to get too off track because we could go all day, I'm sure. But what would you do with a parent when you're, when you're talking to them if, they're, if they say, well, they won't eat that? I heard that all the time. <laughs> it's the common <laughs> one, right? Oh, you know, like one of my Spanish patients said, poco, poco. 
So they do it little by little. So yeah. as long yeah. as the parents are on board with you, with, with the health provider, and so with me, you know, that it works out beautifully and, you know, could take a little longer time, but, you know, as whatever it takes for the, for the kid to be better. So I have mom that I didn't even know that she was following my advice, you know, but I, I'm persistent, right? I don't give up. Yeah. All, she, the, all my patients, all my autism talk. So, yeah, from the one that used to smack me on the face, you know, would let me exam them, to, like, they could make conversations. This is even, you know, within a year, actually. Most, <laughs> within a year, they talk. Um, so, basically, you know, again, I learned from my patient. One of the moms told me that she said she does little by little. So, I don't twist their arm. You got to do this or that, you know? Like, okay, these, these are what I believe could help. And they will, you know, adjust according to what they can do. And if they have questions or want to have, I usually give out recipes, you know, functional medicine also have a lot of good recipes of recipe that I do for myself and my kid. You know, I, I give advice about the lifestyle all the time too. And, and I look at everything, including their sleep and, you know, how, how do they interact with their friends? Because sometimes they may need also speech therapist or occupational therapist and because of my GI background I also help them with you know the desensitization part of the of the oral part that when they have food texture issue um, there's certain technique that you can do to help desensitize and get used to different texture of food uh, little by little again you know nobody want to do anything drastic that make them feel bad or uncomfortable so we basically we're just being a good um facilitator and supporter to assist the patients to get better that way so little by little we get there if you if you tell them you got to climb that, that mountain they say forget it too much but if you give them little segment by segment next thing you know the kid oh my god i, I have patient when my this awesome program of mine when i start usually within a month or two they come back and it's like bright eyes and mom said people ask me what did i do to him one of the kids he was um <laughs> labeled brain damage uh he had brain surgery was in rehab at ohsu here for two years and you know of course he got c's and d's he was drinking also juice soda and not really living a healthy life lifestyle and when i initiated this program you know i met him where he's at and i elevated a little bit and kind of a little bit of negotiation but i let them own the program they, i'm not putting words in their mouth and he got a's and b's now man yeah. a's and b's from brain damage so so and the person who who told mom like what did i do to him you know that's that's what mom was saying that people ask me what did i do to him they didn't even know his grades. He got A's and B's. So, and yeah, and he was hit by a car in 2010 and had brain surgery. The proof is so, in the pudding. I mean, it's honestly, magical. I, I love how you say you're not twisting arms. You know, you're literally, you're helping kids talk and you're helping kids come back from brain damage. And I, I love the way that you approach, uh, things in little little steps because at the potential you that's how we do it we we give them one habit no more than one one habit every two weeks and we're building on that every two weeks because if you throw the mountain at them it's not going to happen so it has to be it has to be too much little, right too much. yeah have to be comfortable you yeah. know just like me too i always come back and think like well how would how would i deal with this you know if it feel too much i can't do it so why would i expect my patient to do that and and i want to uh you know tell parents that you know this is this is your legacy because whatever you help your children with the next generation you know this is the habit that start with you so when the, the children grow up and have their own children they say this is how my mom my dad always treat me this is how we live this is how we eat so the next generation next generation you pass out these legacies for generations to come it's powerful mm. and really worth it it's worth it that's you know because sometimes parents feel it's challenging it's costly you know 
supplement costs money, you know, but if the kid doesn't have good brain, you may take care of them for the rest of your life or their life, right? It's an but investment. It's an investment. <laughs> it's an in your investment health. in it's your not, children. It's not anything. It's investing in your health. And that's the way we think about it. And I love how you brought it full circle here because, I mean, that's literally what the potential you is founded on is, is having their, the parents get healthy, improving their habits, and it's just trickled down to the children, right? If the parent's not healthy, you know, it, the studies show it, it's, it's very hard for, for kids that live in an unhealthy household to get healthy. So, so it has to start at the top and work its way down. Right. So basically being a good role model, Love. the leading example is very important. And, you know, the whole family, usually they come back, they're just so happy. They just eye sparkle. The kid only come in for well child now. Don't need to come in and out for asthma or whatnot anymore. Sometimes it takes to the point that the children are pretty sick before, you know, the parents decide to take action. Yeah. But when they do, oh, the effect was profound. And, you know, I have one asthma patient that he, he, he was five years old and he ran around the store. G Mom come back to him. GF, GF, I can eat this, right? I mean, gluten free. And he took the initiative. <laughs> Five years old, Matt, I didn't even expect that. He ran around the store and he asked his mother which one he can eat, which one he can't eat. And, and he's okay with that. He's not complaining, why can't I eat this? He just looked and said, this one I can eat, right? This one I can't eat, okay? And, and yeah, and he just now come in for well child. Not have to be on asthma medications at all. It's like every story you tell me makes me I'm like I get like chills just thinking about all these kids and 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 it you know it can, like you sometimes it could go the other way right it's the kid kind of bringing it's, bringing the up children the, they're so smart I, oh. I always work with both and because I have even as young as he's not even three years old you know I told about juice he, they came back mom says she she offered a juice to him, and he said, no, my doctor told me I'm not supposed to drink this. Yeah. That... And it was this big, it was like, not even three. I was like, oh my God, the yeah, children are awesome. so smart. They, they really, like, I never underestimate the child. Yeah, you know, I always talk to them too, because if they get it, it's actually work better than the parents get it. Because they'll tell the, they'll tell the parents, like, I don't want this. Yeah. <laughs> this is, it's really, really powerful they they take initiative and and they say this is what i want this is what i don't want yeah and and really profile i i just love what i do it, it's just so <laughs> so rewarding you can tell it. it the passion comes through and it's it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you i have a feeling that this is going to turn into almost a series because we i i mean we've literally been going for it's it's almost an hour now oh and, really okay no, it's awesome. I'm fine with you having fun. <laughs> well, that's the thing. We're having fun. And the other thing is, it's like, I think we could keep going and dig into all these cool subjects. And it's just part of what the reason I wanted to start doing this and interviewing different people like yourself is to bring the, this information to the masses. And that's what we're all doing out here. Like you said, it's a movement. And, um, you know, I want to at least... Uh, give you a chance to, um, you know, share your information. So I know your website is www.naturalwayspediatrics.com, correct? Correct, yes. Awesome. So I'm going to say that again, www.naturalwayspediatrics.com. And this is in Portland, Oregon. So if you are out that way, you're lucky. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's really about just educating yourself, empowering uh, yourself, and bringing all of this to the consciousness, like you said. So I cannot thank you enough for, for taking your time with me today. Um, I know I got a ton out of it, and I'm super grateful for that. And I know all of our viewers are going to get a, and I, they are in for a freaking treat, man. Uh, <laughs> I 
Can I add one more thing about Definitely, the genetics please. piece? That the environment is actually 70%. So your gene is not your destiny. And if you say your grandparents, your mom or dad gave you this gene, you have to have it. No, you don't. So that's why it's so powerful for what you choose mindfully now, how to live your life to have the great outcome for your health I and your well-being. It. I love it. Couldn't have ended on a better note. So uh, the way I end everything, and this is my motto that I leave all my members with, you know, remember you are enough, you matter, you make a difference. So keep showing up, take an action, and you will get results. So thank you, everybody. We will see you again in our next episode. Thank you, Matt, to help.